Yes, guys, let's start the problems on valuation of goodwill. First problem. Find out the average capital employed of ND Limited from its summarized balance sheet as on 31st March 2012. There's a balance sheet which is given to you and come down below. Non-trade investments were 20% of the total investments. And the balance as on 1-4-2011 what PNL 8.2 lakhs and general reserve 6.5 lakhs. So the opening PNL and general reserve are given to you and a balance sheet towards the end is given to you. Now once I have a closing balance sheet that is a balance sheet on 31st March 2012 I can identify what is closing capital employed. We can use the formula assets minus outside liabilities to get that. But what is the information that we need here? The first part of the question is talking about find out average capital employed. How do you get average from closing capital employed? Closing capital employed minus half of current year profits. But where is current year profits? Current year profits is not given. Well, you can calculate the current year profits from your PNL and the general reserve which is given to you. So let's start. Put on a heading. I need current year profit how to calculate current year profits first compare your PNL PNL at the beginning of the year on 1 4 2011 was 8.2 lakhs but check the balance sheet balance sheet on 31st March gave you a PNL of 19.5 so 8.2 has increased to 19.5 there's an increase of 11.3 in PNL so I'll start with that retained earnings nineteen point five in the PNL at the end of the year, eight point three at the beginning of the year, then eleven point two, eight point two at the beginning of the year, then eleven point three is the Profits retained in the current year. This is the profit after appropriation. So add back all the appropriations. Once we add appropriations, we get profit after tax. The first appropriation I can observe is general reserve. What is the appropriation to general reserve observe? General reserve opening is 6.5 and the closing general reserve in the balance sheet is shown at 12. So 6.5 to 12. Appropriation to general reserve is 12 minus 6.5, 5.5. There's one more appropriation if you observe that is nothing but the dividends. The dividend which is proposed during the current year is out of current year profits. So that is also current year profit after tax from which you pay the dividends. Second ap appropriation is the amount of proposed dividend. Proposed dividend I have two parts both preference as well as equity. Equity is 10 preference is 0.9. So 10 plus 0 0.9 appropriation to dividend is 10.9 and this will give you current year profit after tax twenty seven point seven I have current year profit after tax to get average I need closing capital employed if I get closing capital employed I can deduct half of current year profit to get the average capital employed so put on a heading Closing capital employed or it can also be called as terminal capital employed. Both mean the same. A more technical term is terminal capital employed. To get the capital employed we need to deduct the liabilities from my assets. So start with your assets first.
go in line the first fig first asset that i can see is land and building my land and building is 25 second one is plant and machinery the value of plant and machinery is 80.25 third one is furniture there is no realizable value given guys so i am taking the book value as a realizable value that is the most reasonable assumption that i can make in absence of the information i can observe that the, i can take that the book values are itself my realizable values last of fixed asset is your vehicles 5 then come to the investments there is an adjustment to investments when you take investments we are not supposed to take non trade investments he clearly said below the balance sheet non trade investments were 20% of total investments so my total investments is 10 non trade investments are 20% of that so the balance are trade investments total trade investments are 8 then i have stock 6.75 debtors 4.9 cash and bank 10.4 this is my total assets there is no fictitious assets given so i'm not taking that we'll total it later go for your outside liabilities next consider one by one i'm going from bottom to top from the liability side the first one is a proposed dividend which i can see that is not considered as an outside liability so the first outside liability that i'll consider is your provision for tax my provision for tax is 6.4 sundry creditors 2.7 then i have cash credit cash credits are similar to overdraft balances of bank 13.3 then i have a 16% term loan eighteen lakhs sixteen percent debentures five that's it after your debentures comes p and l general reserve and equity shares and preference share capital that cannot be considered as outside liability this is your total of liabilities once you do a minus b we get terminal capital employee once we identify the value of terminal capital employed average capital employed is a simple calculation because my average capital employed use your formula you can either call it as opening plus closing by 2 or closing capital employed minus half of current year's profit after tax. Place the values, you will identify what is your average capital employed.
Yes, total assets. This is 100.4. 100.4 minus half of 27.7. 100.4 minus this is 13.85. So we'll be arriving at the answer as 86.65. That's your average capital employed guys. Just placing the figures there. Then get into the second one. Balance sheet of X Limited as on 31st March 2008 and 2009 is given to you. So two years both opening as well as closing is given. You don't need to use half of current year profits or anything. You just find out the opening and the closing capital employed. Take a simple average of that. You will get the answer. Your non-trade investments are 75% of total investments. Find out the capital employed of 2008 and 2009 and also the average capital employed. So we are adding computation of average capital employed. Go on with the computations. First, I'll start with 31st March 2008 column and 31st March 09 column. This is opening, this is closing. Start with your assets. Capital employed is assets minus outside liabilities. I'll go one by one. First, the assets, sundry fixed assets. No realizable values given. We'll assume our book values are the realizable values. Sundry fixed assets 2400 and 2600. They're all rupees in thousands. Investments excluding non trade investments. Non-trade investments below that he said 75% of total investments are non-trade. So in the first case it should be 25 which are trade. In the second case it is 50 which are trade. Excluding 75% the balance are trade investments. There is only adjustment appearing remaining all assets and liabilities you can take as it is stock 600 and 550. Debtors 300 and 350. Cash and bank 400 and 340. The next is said is preliminary expenses. The realizable value is zero. You can't take the asset because the realizable value is absolutely zero. Then come to outside liabilities. First outside liability, I'm going in the reverse way. First outside liability I observe is tax provision. Provision for tax. 30-40 Creditors 70-60 Cash Credits 120-80 and 80. 18 Term Loan 300 and 320. 
200 each. There is no increase. That's it. The next items are P&L, General Reserve and Share Capital which cannot be treated as outside liabilities. These are my outside liabilities. Story ends there. Once we deduct these two, we will get capital employed. Capital employed at the beginning of the year and capital employed at the beginning of at the end of the year. If we take an average, we get average capital employed. Take a simple average of both. We get average capital employed. Like an average, 3097.5. That is 3097.5 average capital employee. A simple average of opening and closing capital employees. Then let's check your third question, which has something to do with your FMP calculations. PPX gives you the following information regarding your past profits. 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, there are some past profits which are given to you, which are in thousands. On scrutiny, it was found that up to 2008, PPX followed FIFO method for finished stock valuation. Thereafter, it adopted LIFO method. And up to 2009, it followed a SLM basis and thereafter they adopted WDB basis. Given below is the stock valuation, opening and closing stock as per FIFO and LIFO valuation. In the, straight, in the same way, he is also giving you what is SLM and WDB depreciations for each year from 2006 to 2010. Determine what will be the future maintainable profits for the purpose of computation of goodwill? Guys, the first adjustment for this is regarding stock. Up to 2008, that means 2006, 2007, 2008, he followed FIFO. Thereafter, that means 2009 and 10, he followed LIFO. That means my profits of 2006, and 2006 2007 and 2008 are as per FIFO basis. 9 and 10 are as per LIFO basis. Is it easier to convert 2 years from LIFO to FIFO or 3 years from FIFO to LIFO? It is better to convert 2 years. But you can't do that. The simple logical reason is, what is the purpose for which we are doing it? We are trying to identify my future maintainable profits. That means I am talking about my future. If I have already changed my stock valuation to LIFO, what will be the future profits? Future profits also should be based on LIFO basis only. So I can't do the LIFO to FIFO, we need to convert the first three years from FIFO to LIFO. In the same way, even when you come to depreciation part of it, till 2009, that means first four years he followed SLM, thereafter, that means in 2010, he started adopting WDV. It's obviously easier to convert 2010 from WDV to SLM, but I can't do that because we are trying to identify future maintainable profits, not just uniform profits. So we need to convert the first four years from SLM to WDV. So, I am just explaining this because normally we start feeling that why can't we do it this way. So, there is a logical reasoning for that. We are trying to identify future maintainable profits. My future profits will be based on LIFO basis of stock valuation, will be based on WDV basis of depreciation. So, we need to bring the past profits in line with the future profits. So, let's start doing it. Put a heading. Corrected past profits.
How many years are given to you? 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 and 2010. Five years maintain five columns. Corrected past profits. So that I am bringing them in line with each other. I am making them uniform. 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 and 2010. Let's start with the profits given to you. The profits, past profits which are already given to you, everything is in rupees and thousands. Start with profits given. 2170, 2250, 2370, 2450 last one is 2110 I need to give two adjustments here on this first one is the stock adjustment To understand the stock adjustment, you need to understand always whenever there is a change in the valuation of stock, will have two impacts. One impact on stock valuation is regarding closing stock. And the other one should obviously be the impact of opening stock. Let's identify the impact of change in closing stock with the profit. Whenever if you observe the closing stock increases, the profit also should increase. Same way, whenever a closing stock reduces, the profit also reduces. But when it comes to the opening stock, I'll have a reverse adjustment. To understand this adjustment in a simple sense, we can say that your profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold. This is only for your understanding guys. And I can say COGS is equal to opening stock plus purchases plus all direct expenses minus closing stock. Let's take for example closing stock increased. There is a negative sign before that. So what happens to COGS? Decrease. Because there is a negative sign, if a reduction increases, the value decreases. If COGS decreases now, I am taking the same decrease, negative sign before that, profit increases. So if you understand the impact of profit on the, close, the closing stock on the profit, closing stock and the profit are moving in same direction. But if you check for the opening stock, opening stock, the, the, the symbol before that is plus. There is nothing in the sense, basically that's a positive. So whenever you are having an increase here, closing stock, COGS also increases. COGS increases, profit obviously falls. So the relationship between opening stock and the profit is inverse relationship. Closing stock and the profit is direct relationship. So use the same logics and try to apply the values above. How many years? Read the sentence. Up to 2008, PPX followed FIFO in the FIFO method of stock valuation. Thereafter, it adopted LIFO. So, up to 2008, closing stock valuations we need to consider. First, come to closing stock of 2006. Six, he valued as per FIFO 4600, but as per LIFO, it was only 4120. So, now I have to reduce the stock. When I am reducing the stock, what happens to profit? Closing stock. So it has direct relationship. Even the profit should reduce. How much? 4600 minus 4120 is 480. 2007. Your closing stock as per FIFO was 4920. But as per FIFO, it was only 4790. Again a reduction in the stock for 130.
then we come to the last year. 2008 is a final year when he followed FIFO basis now. Now he valued the stock as per 3890 FIFO. But LIFO's closing stock is 3910. Increase in the closing stock. Increase in the profit. So plus 20. Nothing for 2009 and 2010. Guys, a blind thing what we can do now is the closing stock of 2006 should become opening stock of 2007. So the change should be same for it. But decrease in the closing stock, decrease in profits. But decrease in opening stock, increase in profit. So I'll give a reverse sign. So I'll put 480 plus. 130 next year should become 130 positive because it was negative in closing stock. And this 20 should become negative 20 in 2009. That's it. One year is left out. I need to give for the first year. Check the first year opening stock. Opening stock for the first year valued as per FIFO. It was 2006. FIFO 4000. But if I want to change it to LIFO. LIFO was only 3980. That means a reduction in the stock for 20. If they are reducing the opening stock. What happens to the profit? Increases inverse relationship. Inverse relationship 20 positive. Then go for the depreciation adjustment. Adjustment for depreciation. Up to 2009, he followed SLM. Thereafter, he adopted WD. So, 2010, I don't have to adjust. I have to adjust for 4 years. Here, he was following SLM. We need to bring it in line with WDV. Check. First year, 2006. As per SLM, he charged 1210 as depreciation. But as per WDV, the depreciation would have been 1700. That means, now I have to depreciate excess by 490. Second year. SLM basis he charged a depreciation of 1415. But as per WDV it should have been 1810. That means an extra depreciation to be charged is 395. 1810 minus 1415. Next year. He charged 1500. But what he should have charged is 1925. Again, an excess depreciation of 425. Last 2009, last year, 1670 is what he charged. But what he should have charged is 1960. So, now depreciate additionally 290. That's it. Only two adjustments. Now we get corrected profits. First year's corrected profits. I think this is 1220. Last year, as it is, 2110. These are my corrected profits. From this we can, what he is asking is to calculate future maintainable profits. How do you get FMP? FMP is average of the profits. Do you observe any trend there? Increase, decrease. Again increase, again decrease. There is no particular trend which is being followed. So when there is no trend, we can directly take a simple average. So it should be 1, 2, 2, 0. Plus 2205 plus 2095 plus 2140 plus 2110 divided by number of years 5. Much? 1954. 
is the FMP that is the average of corrected past year profits. Past profits taken as the average Let's go for the next one guys. So we have completed initial topics where we are calculating average capital employed and your FMP. Let's go into the main problem where we start valuation of goodwill. Check your valuation of goodwill problem number 4. The following summarized balance sheet of X limited is given to you. A small tiny balance sheet which is given to us and come down below. In 2001 when the company commenced its operation the paid up capital was same. The profit or loss for each of the last 5 years is given to you. First year there is a loss of 5,50,000 in 2008. From 8,9 is consistently made profits 9,82, 11,70, 14,50 and finally 17 lakhs. Although income tax has been paid so far at the rate of 40%, the above profits have been arrived on the basis of such tax rate. So all the profits above profits are based on 40% tax rate. It is declared from the year effective from 11-12, the income tax rate is 45. Though it is given as 11-12, 11-12 profits are already given as 17 lakhs. But he clearly said that the above profits are based on 40% tax rate. But he is saying that from thereafter, after 2011-12, the effective tax rate is 45. So for the computation of FMP, we need to always take future effective tax rate. Future effective tax rate is 45%. 10% dividend in 2008-9 and 9-10 and, and 15% dividend in 2010-11 and 11-12 have been paid. So 4 years the average, average dividend is 12.5%. Market price is 125 as on 31st March 2012. With effect from 1st April, managing director has been, appro have been approved by the government to be taking a remuneration of 8 lakhs in the place of 6 lakhs. So your profits are supposed to be reduced by 2 lakhs from the past profits. Past profits have been arrived after deducting 6 lakhs. Future profits will deduct 8 lakhs. So 2 lakhs of extra deduction that is going to happen. The company has been able to secure a contract for supply of material at advantageous prices. The advantage from the contract is valued at 4 lakhs per annum for the next 5 years. Ascertain 3 years prices of goodwill of super profits. Based on future profit, the future main, main double profits, weighted average is supposed to be taken. He clearly said weighted average, so you don't check for a trend or something. Even if there is no trend, you have to apply weighted average. That's it. Now, three determinants: FMP, average capital employee, and the last one is NRR. NRR not given, but I know dividends. I know market price per share, so I can use dividend yield method for computation of NRR. 
FMP, those profits which are given to you, they have been taken at 40%. The only adjustment is tax. And then I have two adjustments for FMP. One is increasing managing director remuneration that should reduce my profits by 2 lakhs. And one last one where it's talking about some ad additional contract which is giving them a advantage of 4 lakhs per annum. So two adjustments to FMP towards the end after taking the average other than tax. Next, average capital employed. How do you calculate average? I have closing here. I have closing capital employed taking the closing balance sheet. I can apply the closing balance sheet. Happily, I can calculate closing capital employed. So from closing capital employed, how do you get average? Minus half of current year profits. What is current year? Check the balance sheet date. 11-12. 11-12 profit already given to you as 17 lakhs. Half of that is 8 lakh 50. Deduct, you will get average capital employed. So, Yes guys, let's start. Always start with FMP guys, then you can go for capital employed. Because what we need is average capital employed. So we'll take it towards the last, last calculation should be NRR and then goodwill. First one, go in the order. First working note should be FMP. Let's start FMP calculation, put down and FMP. Guys, the trick of valuation is that your answer will change based on the assumption that you take. Here, if you observe the past profits, there's a loss in one year. But they have been consistently making profits over the next few years. So normally, the, what the people say is, they can take an assumption saying that this 2007-8 is an abnormal loss. It's an abnormal year because the remaining years are showing profits. So they will not take that as an average. But since nothing is given, let's not make any particular assumption. Let's take that as a normal year only. But first year he made a loss and thereafter he started making profits. So which could be a reasonable assumption, we can start with that. Okay, so all these are profits after taxes guys. So let's start with that FMP. Computation of FMP. There is no adjustment to past profits. We can directly start with average of past profits. Guys, he clearly said take weighted average for the past profits. Start year profit weight profit into weight. Go on. Year. 7, 8 profit is a loss minus 5 lakh 50 next 8, 9 9 lakh 82,000 9, 10 11 lakh 70,000 10, 11 14 lakhs 50,000 11, 12, 17 lakhs, 17 lakhs, apply weights, what is the logic for applying weights, 
most recent year highest weight and the earliest year least weight. So earliest year is 2007-8, least weight 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know it sounds silly, why am I repeating it again and again? Because if you start taking 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, your answer will be completely different. So let's try to be specific regarding that. Sum of weight is 10. Or is it 15? Sum of weight is 15. Let's do profit into weights. First year minus 5 lakh 50. Second year is 19 lakh 64,000. Third year is 35 lakhs 10,000. Next year is 58 lakhs. And the last year is 70 lakhs. Sum total of all this is Crore 92 lakhs 24,000. So now you can find out the average of past profits. This is average profits after tax. Average profit after tax is 1 crore 92 lakhs 24,000 divided by 15. Even if you get it points, try to round it off. It's twelve eighty one six hundred is the average of past profits, guys. But this is. Profits after tax. After how much tax? We are taking 40% tax. But the future effective tax rate is 45. Understand there are two more adjustments as well. One managing director remuneration, one new contract. Guys, even when you are giving an adjustment to managing director's remuneration and the future contract, mm -hmm. even there also we have to start applying for tax rate there. So what we will start doing is, let us try to convert this profit after tax to profit before tax. Give those two adjustments. Then we will get FMP before tax. Then straight forward one single time I will deduct 45% and that will give you your FMP after tax. Following this, from the subsequent problems we will always do that. We'll all, Whenever there is a change in the tax rate or even if there is no change in the tax rate, let's try to bring all the profits to profit before tax. Because we have adjustments to profits and each time if you don't deduct tax, if you don't you know, bring it to profit before tax. We have to keep adjusting for tax in every adjustment. So it's always better to bring the profits to before tax, give all the adjustments and then deduct tax at one point of time towards the end. So let's bring it up. Average PBT. Average profit before tax. This is after deducting 40%. That means this is 60%. So to get this, 12,81,600 should be divided by 60%. Multiplied by 100, divided by 60. Much? lakhs 21,36,000.
long as we take it that So let's give the two adjustments guys. One is managing director's remuneration increase in MD remuneration. Guys, increase in MD remuneration will decrease the profit. How much is this increase? His remuneration was earlier 6. Now it is approved by government to pay 8. So 2 lakhs extra. 2 lakhs profit reduced. Advantage from contract. There is a contract which is giving you an advantage for the next 5 years. Check the advantage from the contract. The amount is 4 lakhs per annum. With this we get FMP pre-tax. Pre-tax FMP is 23 lakhs 36,000. Can we calculate FMP post-tax from this? FMP post-tax which should be considered. We have to consider future effective tax rate. So 23 lakh 36,000 pre-tax minus future effective tax rate is 45%. Considering a future effective tax rate of 45%, my future profits FMP post tax is 12,84,800. First working note over, first determinant over. Second determinant is average capital employed. How do we get average capital employed? First we need to get terminal capital employed. From the terminal capital employed, you need to deduct half of current year profits. Check terminal capital employed, guys. Take the basis of the work of the balance sheet which is given to us. For calculating terminal capital employed, start always with assets. Reduce it by outside liabilities, we'll get closing capital employed. First asset, goodwill, I will not consider because we are valuing goodwill, I can't consider goodwill. As a part of net assets. So the first asset that I should consider is land and building. Thirty two lakhs. Next plant and machinery. Twenty eight. Next, stock, 32 again. <coughs> debt as considered good, that means there is no bad debt there. Debt as 20 lakhs. That will give me a total of my asset side, which is 1 crore 12 lakhs. Deducts outside liabilities from this. First of the outside liability go in the reverse manner. P&L appropriation is not outside liability. It is shareholder funds. What is the next outside liability? Provision for tax, which is an outside liability. It's a liability towards the government. 5,10,000. 
creditors. 21 lakh 10,000. Bank OD. Outside liability again. 18 lakh 60,000. The next one is share capital, which is not an outside liability. That's it. These are your outside liabilities. This is 44 lakh 70,000. 44,80 and this should give you a terminal capital employed or the closing capital employed A minus B 1 crore 12 lakhs minus 44 lakhs is 67 lakhs 20,000. Closing capital employed. Once you get closing, from here I can easily calculate average. Average capital employed. Is equal to my closing capital employed minus half of current year profit after tax. What is current year profit after tax? 17 lakhs. This is already after tax. It clearly gave you that. So my current year profit is 67 lakhs 20,000 minus half of 17 lakhs 17 lakhs half is 8 lakh 50 so you get this as 68 58 lakh 70 thousand 59 lakh 70 58 70 58 70 is your average capital employed we have our FMP post tax as 12 lakh 84 thousand 800 so one last information that I need is I've got two determinants FMP capital employed one last determinant that we need is NRR we need to calculate the normal rate of return you can in short call it as NRR an accepted abbreviation NRR and FMP no problem Capital employed, I tend to write it as CAPM. Please try to write it as full form capital employed. NRR, come on. Information given to us regarding calculation of NRR. If NRR is not given as a percentage, I can either use dividend yield valuation or I can use uh, earning yield valuation. What is given to us? I am given dividend percentages for 4 years. So I can calculate based on dividend yield valuation. What is the average dividend? Dividend of 10% has been paid for 2008-9 and 9 10 10% is not for both complete years. 10% for 2008-9 and 2008-9 and 9 10 10% and 10%. 15% for 2010-11 and also 15% for year 2011-12. So to get a DPS, first calculate average dividend percentage. Average dividend percentage. First year 10%, second year 10%, next two years 15% and 15%. Total number of years 4 years, my average dividend paid is 12.5%. Now if I want to calculate what is the Average dividend per share DPS this 12.5 percent should be multiplied on the paid up value of shares paid up value of share is check balance sheet 100 rupee share average dividend per share is 12.5 only 
market price per share is given to you as 125. Check the question, he has already given you that. The market price of shares as on 31st March 2012 is 125. DPS, MPS, sufficient enough? NRR on dividend yield basis. NRR is equal to DPS by MPS into 100. 12.5 by 125 into 100. This is 10%. Yes guys, I know FMP. I know average capital employed. I know NRR. All the three determinants there with you. Check the valuation of goodwill. What is he talking about? Ascertain goodwill based on three years purchase of super profits. So take the super profits method for valuation of goodwill. Valuation of goodwill. Super profit method. Goodwill is equal to super profit and number of years purchase. How do you get super profit? Compare average profit that FMP minus normal profit. So I'll start with FMP. Twelve lakhs eighty four thousand eight hundred. This is FMP. I picked up from the first working note. I need to compare this with normal profit. How do you get normal profit? Normal profit is equal to NRR as a percentage applied on average capital employed. Apply NRR is 10%. Average capital employed is 58 lakhs 70,000. So this is 58. 5,87,000. Comparing these two, I can identify my super profit. Super profit is 6,97,800. Goodwill computation is simpler now. Goodwill is equal to number of years purchase is 3. So 6,97,800 multiplied by 3. This is 20 lakhs. 20,93,400 is the value of goodwill as per super profits method. That will bring us to the end of the problem guys. That is what he has asked us. Valuation of goodwill.